Greetings, everyone. Well, time for another Blu-ray update. As you know, I've been a huge fan of Shout Factory for a very long time, and uh, over the course of the past year or so, I've also become a big fan of their their uh, recent kind of sister brand, Scream Factory. There's been some really good stuff coming out from them. Um, there's once in a while there will be one release that doesn't have a great transfer, like for example, Cat People really does not have a very good transfer. It's kind of DNR to hell. So I'm, as much as I love cat people and was really looking forward to that release, I won't be getting it. However, there are quite a few other releases that are fantastic and that I do plan to get. And well, I did get, and that's what we're going to look at today. Screaming and shouting today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Well, first up, this is not a Scream Factory title or a Shout Factory title, but it is kind of related. This is totally going to give it away. Well, you may recall uh, a little while ago I reacquired something that, uh, um, well, is is kind of hard to come by nowadays. I just kind of lucked out on it, and lucked out and found it in a um, uh, one of the local uh, like thrift stores, like well, like pawn shops or you know CD shops, whatever. Uh, and I'm of course talking about the 50th anniversary edition of Psycho, which is a fantastic Blu-ray that I've talked about on numerous occasions. So I got that, and then of course I really wanted to get the sequels. And for a long time, the only way we could get the sequels was basically a, a triple feature DVD that had Psycho two, three, and four, until Shout Factory came along. And gave us this beautiful deluxe edition of Psycho 2. Check this out. With the slipcover, of course. Ideally, you want to get the slipcover. Honestly, the slipcovers, they're very nice, but they're not like embossed or shiny or anything. So if you miss out on them, it's not too big a deal. Uh, the main thing is with the collector's editions of the Scream Factor titles where they have new artwork on the slipcover. And then often they'll have the original poster art. Um, on a reversible insert for the uh, uh, Blu-ray. So if you have the slip cover, actually what some of you have uh, said you've been doing is you'll have the uh, the new artwork on the slip cover and then reverse the cover on the uh, the Blu-ray keep case to have the movie artwork on the keep case, which is actually a really good idea that I like a lot and I think that's what I'm going to start doing as well because I think that's a really cool idea. Anyway, so we have Psycho 2, beautiful new transfer. This was actually the first Psycho movie I ever saw. And before I even saw the movie, my introduction to the world of Psycho was actually the Mad Magazine parody of Psycho 2, which I have buried in a box somewhere here. But, uh, yeah, so I actually knew pretty much the whole plot of Psycho 2 before I ended up seeing the movie. Now, it was, uh, I don't know, a year or so later, I finally saw the movie on VHS, and uh, it was my introduction to Norman Bates and the world of Psycho. And uh, honestly, as far as a uh, uh, sequel goes, I mean, it's no small feat to do a sequel to a freaking masterpiece like this. Um, do I think it's as good as the Hitchcock original? No, of course not. But as far as a horror sequel goes, it's actually pretty damn good. Like, it's actually got a pretty solid plot and a pretty decent cast, and it's quite well done. Um, I really like this a lot. And I find it holds up really well, too. Because uh, So when I got this, I couldn't wait to watch it because I hadn't seen it in probably 20 years. And um, I found it just as, as effective and chilling as it was many moons ago. In fact, I had forgotten parts of it, so some parts were a surprise to me all over again, which was lots of fun. So in terms of extras, we have audio commentary with screenwriter Tom Holland, vintage video and audio interviews with Anthony Perkins, Vera Miles, and director Richard Franklin, theatrical trailer, and TV spot. One thing I should say about the uh, vintage featurettes there is some of the, there's kind of a compilation of them, and some of the uh, first few, the audio actually drops out completely on some of them. But then uh, those segments where the audio drops out are repeated in other uh, packages. So, which leads me to wonder, like, if that was a problem and the material existed in other featurettes, why not just take the audio from those other featurettes and patch the holes in the broken ones? You know, I, I just don't understand why they didn't do that. It would have been a really easy fix to do. 
um, I could do that on my freaking editing program. Any, most of you could probably do that. So I don't understand why, why Shout kind of slacked on that. But um, anyway, it's nice to have those, those archival featurettes, certainly, because um, I actually remember seeing some of those on TV back in the day. And, uh, you know, you have Vera Miles talking about how she doesn't generally like sequels, but she thought that this was a pretty cool idea that they came up with. So, anyway, Psycho 2, very cool. But not to stop there, they also gave us Psycho 3. Yeah, now Psycho 3, the only thing I remembered about Psycho 3 was a topless scene where there's this girl who, uh, you know, is shoved out of a hotel room by, uh, you know, one of the asshole characters in it, played beautifully by Jeff Fahey, by the way. Plays a great, you know, creepy character in this. Um, shoves her out into the into the cold night, and she has no shirt on. So it's a very lengthy, topless scene, which teenage me really enjoyed. <laughs> Except for the fact I was watching the movie with my parents, so it was always awkward you know you want to enjoy the nude scene but not too much because your parents are right there in the room with you anyway um and then i remembered the i remembered the scene specifically where she puts her sweater on and then it's on inside out so she takes the sweater off again and then you get more boobs you know <laughs> and then she puts it on again but uh, that that was literally the only thing I remembered about the movie. Now, when I watched it again after getting the Blu-ray, a lot more started to come back to me. There's, uh, you know, just a few scenes. So I'm pretty sure I only ever saw Psycho 3 once. Like, back, you know, 20-plus years ago, that awkward evening when I watched it with my parents. And, uh, well, yes. There we go. <laughs> anyway, as far as uh, sequels go... This is interesting because it's actually the directorial debut of Anthony Perkins. He only directed like two movies uh, and then everything else he just acted in. But uh, honestly, as far as directorial style goes, I thought he did a pretty good job. They, there's some pretty cool visual flourishes in there and such. And it would have been nice if he had uh, directed more in his career. But um, so this one has audio commentary with screenwriter Charles Edward Pogue. Interviews with actors Kat Shea, Brink Stevens, and special makeup effects artist Michael Westmore, and theatrical trailer. And there you go. So, pretty cool. So, all in all, I would definitely recommend picking these up if you're a fan of the original, if only to see more of, you know, Norman Bates in action. And, uh, and as I say, as far as sequels go, they're pretty damn good, especially the second one. The second one, I think, is, is a really solid sequel. Uh, that has a really interesting uh, plot with lots of twists and turns along the way, as you would expect. And Psycho 3, you know, it's it's definitely not on par with the first two, but it's fun. You know, it's fun anyway. <coughs> and um, and does have some, uh, some moments worth checking out. So next up, uh, kind of dipping into sci-fi horror territory here. I guess I could have put these in the sci-fi update the other day, but I decided to keep it for a Scream Factory and Shout Factory update. I used to have this one on uh, DVD. I, uh, this is another one I remember from my youth, specifically for just the nudity in it, because there's a lot of actual full frontal nudity in it. But uh, yeah, Vampires from Space. We have Life Force. Yeah, this is a really... This is an example of one of the collector's editions where they have uh, new artwork on the cover. And then if we uh, if we actually take it out of the slip cover, I haven't reversed it yet, but um, if you take a look on... Actually, why don't I reverse it right now? I'll just do it right now, and then you can see. So basically, it just has the same artwork and the same uh, info from the slip cover. But then, if we take the insert out on the back, you can actually see... The original poster art which is really cool I really like how they do that so I'm actually going to put this in this way and that will be my slipcase cover or sorry my uh, my keep case cover from now on which I think is a great idea so big thank you to the viewers who suggested I do that because I think it's the perfect way to have these collector sets there we go perfect well, nice. Check that out. The original poster. And uh, and you get some different pictures on the back as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, she put the discs in. <laughs> she put the discs back in. 
There we go. So two disc set, Blu-ray, DVD. Um, yeah, but this is a this is a really cool. It's just a cool, you know, chilling sci-fi horror piece. You got Steve Rails back, who was an awesome uh, actor I've always really liked, and uh, yeah, just and it's directed by Toby Hooper, the folk, the the gentleman who brought us the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So this contains both the theatrical cut and the longer director approved cut. I think the DVD I had previously only had the director's cut on it. So yeah, so that that's the one you really want is the director's cut. Uh, a little bit more nudity, a little more violence. Um, so special features, we actually got quite a package of stuff here. We have audio commentary with director Toby Hooper. All new retrospective with cast and crew, including actor Steel, Steve Railsback. Uh, director Toby Hooper, and more. Vintage Making of Life Force featurette. Theatrical trailers, TV spot, and still galley. One of the things I really like about these show, uh, these Scream Factory sets is that they include vintage featurettes as well as new stuff. They get whoever they can to do new stuff, but then they also include a lot of uh, archival stuff, which is great. Last but certainly not least, uh, this one, I believe, does have some nudity that I would have enjoyed as a as a young lad. However, the only thing I remembered about it from my childhood was uh, I saw this a little bit too young. I was a little, I must have been around, when did it come out? came out in 1980 and I think I saw some snippets of it in 19, like 1981, 82. I would have been like nine or ten years old and um, I didn't see the whole movie until years and years later. Uh, when I was, you know, quite a bit older and, you know, able to properly enjoy it. Um, but as a kid, there was there was a couple of moments in it that I just caught, and uh, they scared the shit out of me because they were, they were gory. And, well, let me just show you what it is. We have Saturn 3. Now, this was actually put out as a Shout Factory title rather than a Scream Factory title. Apparently, there was a vote. They had two titles. They were trying to decide one was going to go on Shout Factory, one was going to go on Scream Factory. So it was between this and Ninja 3, The Domination. Ninja 3, The Domination won out and was released on the Scream Factory label. Saturn 3 was put on the, the Shout Factory label. Now, I always thought Saturn 3 was a shoe-in for Scream Factory just because of, you know, it's, it's a classic sci-fi horror thriller. And, um... I don't know. I, I I was kind of surprised, but apparently Ninja Three won out because it has some supernatural elements and some possession and things like that. So it was a little bit more horror-y just comparing the two. But I don't know. I don't think it should have been a contest to begin with. I think it's just, this should have been a Shout Factory or a Scream Factory one. Then we could have had some alternate artwork and um, beautiful slipcover, but whatever. Anyway, I can't really complain too much because I always really liked this poster art. Uh, this this uh, menacing looking fellow is named Hector and he's basically the uh, killer robot in the movie and it was some scenes involving the killer robot that I saw as a young lad that scared the living shit out of me and I think for that reason I didn't I, I kind of avoided this movie for a long time but this is pretty good I mean it's actually uh, honestly the, the the killing isn't a very big part of it it's much more of a character driven piece uh, stars Farrah Fawcett, Kirk Douglas, and Harvey Keitel. So three pretty heavy hitters of the 70s and 80s right there. Um, yeah, great stuff, great stuff. But um, yeah, so in terms of special features, we got commentary by Greg Moss from the Saturn 3 fan page and film critic David Bradley. Interviews of screenwriter, special effects artist Colin Chilvers and actor Roy Dotrice. Uh, deleted scenes and theatrical trailer and there you go who directed this one anyway does it say it was Stanley Donnan Stanley Donnan story by John Barry uh, music by Elmer Bernstein yeah there you go Elmer Bernstein who uh, I think also did some of the uh, did he, whoops uh, did you do this one Carter Burwell and I don't know why I'm suddenly wanting to see... Oh, my God! Henry Mancini? Okay, that I did not know. Henry Mancini did the music for Life Force. That's awesome! And John Dykstra did the special effects. Wow. This and screenplay by Dan O'Bannon and Don Jacoby. 
Wow, this has like way more uh, street cred than I realized. Those are some really, uh, you know, top-notch guys. Jerry Goldsmith does the music for Psycho 2. And uh, it was Bernard Herman did this one, right? Yeah, it doesn't say on the back. Anyway, we know this was Bernard Herman. But anyway, yeah, Elmer Bernstein did a lot of music in the in the 80s. I remember seeing seeing his name floating around in quite a few soundtracks. Where did I put my glasses? Yeah, so there you go. Another five selections, or sorry, four selections <laughs> from the uh, Scream Factory and Shout Factory collections. There's quite a few I want to get from these, uh, uh, you know, labels. Like, for example, they just put out The Shadow from Sh from uh, Shout Factory. I really want to get that. Uh, they did a Blu-ray release of Swamp Thing. You know I'm a huge Swamp Thing fan, so I definitely want to get that. Um, and there's a few other cult films as well. There's stuff like Body Bags and Assault on Precinct 13, uh, Prince of Darkness, uh, the, the original Howling, um, Day of the Dead. It's actually a really nice edition of Day of the Dead that they put out. And uh, stuff like that. Oh, Q, the Winged Serpent. That's another one. Um, yeah, there's, there, there's like a whole bunch of stuff that they put out. I just, I've been focusing on other things, so I just haven't got around to it. So... Might uh, might go on a bit of a Scream Factory binge sometime soon. The, these average between twenty and twenty five bucks a piece, depending where you get them, but uh, not too bad. I mean, they are properly deluxe editions with with loads of extras and and uh, with the exception of titles like Cat People, they do have quite stellar transfers most of the time. So um, yeah. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> that is it for me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching. And sayonara.